my JHS1 students. So we are welcome to another video lesson. We are looking at factorization today. It is the last topic under algebraic expression. Then next week, God willing, we move to the next topic. Now, what is factorization about? The first thing is, the, the main thing under factorization is what? Is grouping. Okay, grouping um, numbers with the same variables. But when I solve the first question, then I can be able to explain further to you what factorization is about. Let me pick the first question. Now, when you are grouping uh, in factorization, you have to make sure that the variable, okay, but the groupings you are doing, it must have a variable that is common to both of them. Grouping means putting uh, numbers in a bracket and putting another set of numbers in the bracket. So I can group this first one and group this second one. Why can I group it? Because I can realize that there is a common variable which is what? A, A. A is here and A is here. And I can also group this set of variables. Why? Because C is here and C is also there. So first of all, when you are solving questions of factorization, you group. So I have my first group here and I have my second group here. So let's write it. So I have 3A squared plus 2AB. I group it. This is what grouping means, that you are putting it in bracket. Then I have my what? What is the operation sign here? It's a minus, right? So I have my 12AC and my minus 8BC. Okay, so this is the first grouping. I hope it is clear. Now, the second step in factorization. <clears throat> you look for a, a number that is a factor to each of the numbers in the bracket. Okay, now, what is that common factor? The common factor is 1. Okay, and the common variable to is what? A, but I don't, it's not right to write 1A. So I cancel, I just make my 1 and I put my A there. A is here and A is here. Now, what do we have here? 3A squared, right? So inside the bracket for this one is what? 3A. So that means A times 3A is supposed to give me what? The 3A squared. People, for you to know if your answer is correct, make sure that after all them doing this, then when you multiply it, you should have the same thing in the bracket. If you forget the A here, and you multiply A times 3, A times 3 is not the same as this 3A squared. So that means this thing you have done here is wrong. So when you are solving mathematics, try and be checking your answers to make sure that I'm, is what I'm doing correct. You get it. So now you bring your A here because 3A times A, 3A will give me what? 3A squared. Let's look at the next one. What is the operation sign here? Plus. Some of you are fond of changing the operation signs when you are moving to the next step. I don't know who taught you that. Don't do this. If it is plus up here, it is still plus down there. It is only when it is crossing the is equal to sign that it changes. Okay. Now, we have A here, right? So we, our, what is left here is 2B. Now you can see that A times 2B will give you what? 2AB. Alright? So you close it. Now let's come to the second group. My minus for my minus is outside. What is the factor that is common to them? The factor that is common to them is 4. Now I bring my 4 out here. Okay? And one number times 4 will give me 12. It is what? Um, 3, right? So I have my 3. Sorry, it is not just my 4. After I've picked my 4, I look at the variable that is common to them, and that variable is what? C. So I bring my C here. Okay. And 4 times 12 is 4 times 3 is what? 12. And I bring my what? My A here. Okay. Now, you realize that negative 4C times 3A will give me what? A minus 12AC. Now, when you see the question, do you see that you have your minus 12 AC here? I hope you understand what I'm saying. So, whatever you are doing there, at the end of it, you must still come back to get this same answer. So, you can see that your negative 4 times a 3A will come back to give you what? Your negative 12 AC. Alright, so we are continuing with the solving of the question. 
Now let's deal with this one. Negative 4 times what number will give you what? To 8BC. It is going to be what? A plus 2. Because negative 4 times 2 will give you what? Negative 8. If you write a negative here for me, if you write a negative 2 here for me, you are wrong. Because your negative 4 times your negative 2 will not give you a negative 8. It will give you a plus 8. Which is not what is in the question. So the answer, the, the, the operation sign here is what? Plus. Now you have your 4C here. So what do you have left in the bracket? It is B. Okay. So this is the first step. Now, how are you going to know if what you have done is correct? The numbers in the bracket must be the same. So you see, 3A plus 2B, and here it is what? 3A plus 2B. This should give you some kind of satisfaction to know that, oh, finally, I'm on the right path. Now, the last stage in factorization, you pick the numbers in front of each of the bracket, then you pick one of them in the bracket. So I pick A minus 4C, A minus 4C, I close it. And I pick one of these. So 3a plus 2b. This is my final answer. You see how easy it is, right? Simple. Okay, now let's pick my next question here. My next question is for b squared plus fb minus mb minus fm. I can group this, right? I can group this and I can group this. Why can I do? Because they are all they have all have common factors or common variables in there. There is a b here, and there's a b here, there is an m here, and there's an m here. Okay, so let's go. So I have my b2 plus fb minus mb minus fm. All right. What is the common factor here? One, obviously, right? But I don't write my one. I bring my B out. I take one B out of here. What am I left with? I'm left with another B. So B times B will give me what? B squared. Plus F times B. So this B takes out this B here. You're left with what? F here. So B squared and B F. So we're on the right part. Now we bring our minus. What is our common factor here? Our common factor here is what? M. So I bring my M here. Right? And what do I have left here? B. So my negative M times my B will give me what? Negative M B. Just as it is in the question. You get it? So I have what? Negative M B. Just as it is in the question. Then I have what? Minus F, minus N here, times this here. So what is the common one here? The common, we um, have M here. So you are going to be left with what? F here. It must be a plus F. You close it. Why is it a plus F? Because negative M times positive F will give you what? A minus F M, which is in the question. So you see, algebraic expressions is very, very easy. But if your multiplication of negative and positive numbers are not on point, you are failing everything. So I always tell you that if you always have to make sure that what your multiplication of positive and negative numbers have to be on point. Okay. Now, aren't we at the right part? Yes, we are. How do we know? Because the numbers in the bracket or the, the variables in the bracket are the same. So you have B plus F. B plus F. So we pick the numbers in front of the variables in front of the bracket, which is what? B minus M, close the bracket. Then you pick this one, B plus F. This is your answer. Okay, so quickly, next question. Now, the next question is what? x squared minus fx plus 6. Okay, now, so, when you see this one, I know I'm going to ask yourself that. 
How is it going to go? Because you have only have three numbers, but all the ones I'm at and many have been solving. I'm seeing only three, I'm seeing four, but this one is three. Simple. We can deal with the number here. We can get two numbers out of this, making our question four variables. How do we get it? Look here, x squared. What two numbers or what two like terms to give you minus 5x? It is minus 2x and minus 3x. These two together will give us what? Minus 5x. Then you bring your final out, which is what? 6. You see how simple it is? Very simple. Now we can do our groupings. What is common here? x. So you have x here. Minus what is here? 2. So x squared and minus 2x. What is the common factor here? 3, right? So I bring my minus and I bring my 3. What am I left here with? x. Now, minus 3 definitely has to be a negative number to give you what? Your 6. So it's going to be what? Minus 2. Because minus 3 times 2 will give you what? Positive 6. So you bring the numbers outside the bracket. So you have x and minus 3. Close it. Luckily for us, these are the same. So this is your answer. As simple as it is. Okay. Let's quickly move to the next question. Let's quickly move to the next question. As I'm solving, take your books and write everything that I'm doing. Don't just waste your data and just watch the video. The one you finish is not written anything down. Make sure that as you are watching it, you are using money to buy data. So as you are watching it, you put down notes so that you don't really have to come back watching the video so many times. Okay, now our question here is what? 1 over 4 px squared plus 1 over 8. 1 over 8 px. I know it's in this question, I'm going to be like, hey, this one here, but it is very easy. Okay. Now, the question you ask yourself is, what are the common things there? The common things there are two. One over four and p and x. So one over four comes out of the bracket. So one over four, px. Because 1 over 4 px times x will give us what? 1 over 4 px squared. Then the final one is going to be what? 1 over 2. And the px is already here, so you don't have to bring it here. Isn't it simple? Very simple. So when you come here, you realize that what? 1 over 4 px times x. And then what do we have? Plus 1 over 4 times 1 over 2 px. So what is happening here? This one is going to be what? 1 over 4 px squared plus this one. Numbers of the, the fractions, when they are multiplying, you multiply the numerator and the denominator separately. So 1 times 1 is 1. 2, 4 times 2 is what? 8. Then you carry what? Your px. This is your answer. So you have gone back to the answer. The question they gave you. Number five. Now, number five is very, very interesting. Now, this is very simple. How simple is it? Now, you realize that these numbers are already here, right? These uh, variables are here. M, N, M plus N, and M plus N are already there. And in factorize what you have been doing so far you just pick one of them right so you pick one of them so we have m plus n 
I've paid one. Now when I pay n plus n, I am now left with what? 2x minus y minus x. So I have what? 2x minus y minus minus x. Okay, now when you go to your QLab, you see how they've done this question, but I know some of you might not understand. That's why I'm doing it. Now, you pick m plus m. Then here you group like terms. 2x minus x minus y. So you have m plus n. Close it. 2x minus x will give us what? x. Then you have what? Minus y. So I know you see this question, you are QLab, but this is just how simple it is. This is what they were doing. Okay, last question for the day. Now, when you have a question like this, you can see that this one, the ones in the brackets are not like. So you have to open the bracket. So this is how I'm going to open the bracket. You open the bracket by using the number outside the bracket to multiply each number in the bracket. So we have what? 6 xy minus 9 xz plus 2 y r minus 3 z r so i have opened the bracket now after opening the bracket i can now go ahead and group so there's a common one here x is here x is here so that means i can do my factorization y is here y r is here r is there so what is a common um, factor three so three then i have what three x right so x then i'm left with what two y then i'm left with what three three nine i have three what z that is right okay now what's our common factor here is one and what r so i have r then i have what two y minus three z I am safe, aren't I? Because I have the same variables in the bracket. So I have 3x plus r. I'm picking that, I'm picking that, and I'm picking one of this. 2y minus 3z. Alright, so that is where we are going to end our topic today. As usual, more questions on factorizations. I'll see you next week. Bye.